The Bulgarian cosmonaut program refers to human spaceflight efforts by Bulgaria. The idea of a Bulgarian manned space mission predated the launch of Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite. An informal proposal for the Soviet Union to send a Bulgarian cosmonaut in space was issued in 1964, but it was not seriously considered by the Soviets. Official space cooperation began in 1966 with the establishment of the Intercosmos program which allowed communist bloc countries to access Soviet space technology and assets. Under Intercosmos, Bulgaria sent its first cosmonaut, Georgi Ivanov, to the Salyut 6 space station and became the sixth country in the world to have a citizen in space. However, a malfunction in his Soyuz 33 spacecraft prevented the crew from docking, and Ivanov only spent 31 orbits around Earth before safely descending back to Earth. A second Bulgarian cosmonaut, Alexander Alexandrov, spent 10 days on the Mir space station in 1988 and performed a variety of scientific experiments. Topic background The launch of Sputnik 1 in October 1957 provided impetus for the first steps of space research in Bulgaria. Radio signals from the satellite were studied by the Ionospheric Radio Measurement and Control Center, established the previous year. A station for optical tracking of Sputnik 1 was set up in November 1957 on Plana Mountain. Influenced by these events and publications of the International Astronautical Federation, engineer Georgi Asparahov and Bulgarian Air Force Captain Docho Harilampiev decided to introduce the wider public to the topic of space exploration. Harilampiev was also convinced that if a human were to fly in space next, the candidate had to be a pilot in excellent physical and mental condition. The two initiated a series of meetings with Bulgarian army generals, pilots, aviation doctors, engineers, Bulgarian Communist Party members and Bulgarian Academy of Sciences representatives. As a result, the first dedicated space research body in Bulgaria, the Astronautical Society BAS, was established in Sofia on December 8, 1957. The rigid legal environment at the time prevented it from being formed as an independent entity, and it was initially organized as an astronautics section of the Defense Assistance Organization. Shortly after the Society's establishment, dozens of engineers and workers from the recently closed Factory 14 became members of the BAS. The Society joined the International Astronautical Federation in 1958. In 1959, the first Bulgarian book on human spaceflight, The Human Organism and Interplanetary Flight, was published. The intensity of the space race increased further after Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. In 1964, Bulgarian Air Force Commander in Chief Lieutenant General Zahari Zahariev discussed with Soviet Defense Minister Rodion Malinovsky the possibility to send four Bulgarian pilots, the Stamenkov brothers, in space. Malinovsky did not consider the request a serious one, especially given the lack of Soviet spacecraft that could carry all four of the brothers. The Soviet Union established its own body for international cooperation in space research, known as the Intercosmos Council, in May 1966. As a communist bloc state, Bulgaria became one of its founding members. Bulgarian leader Toda Zhivkov subsequently ordered the establishment of the National Committee for the Research and Utilization of Space in February the following year. NCRUS became a member of the Intercosmos Council in April. By the end of 1967 the committee adopted a program of activities that included the development of joint Soviet-Bulgarian satellite instruments and studies on human physiology and microgravity. Space activities were further concentrated under the Group of Space Physics under the Academy of Sciences in 1969, which became the Central Laboratory of Space Research in 1974. Bulgaria became actively involved in all components of Intercosmos. Instruments were placed in vertical sounding rockets, several satellites of the Intercosmos series, and ground control activities were carried out in cooperation with the Soviet Union and other communist countries of the program. 
Bulgarian participation in manned intercosmos missions was part of the program's broader Soviet objective of assisting communist bloc countries in space research. Furthermore, Intercosmos member countries were largely relieved of financial costs as the USSR virtually financed all R&D activities, flights and technology sharing. Member states only financed specific experiments in which they were interested. When the decision to extend Intercosmos cooperation to human spaceflight was taken in 1976, selection of candidates was made easier by nearly a decade of cooperation before that. Topic: Intercosmos flight. Selection for the second Intercosmos cosmonaut class in Bulgaria was carried out in 1976–1977. Bulgarian pilots who graduated at the Dolna Mitropolia Air Force Academy between 1964 and 1972 were eligible for selection. Almost all of these graduates applied and were sent for medical examination by an aviation medicine commission. Candidates who passed the first round of tests were then sent to the Senior Military Medical Institute in Sofia and subjected to several weeks of examinations in isolated conditions. Only four candidates made it through the second round, Georgi Ivanov Kakalov, Alexander Alexandrov, Georgi Yovchev and Ivan Nikov. A final round of examinations in Moscow in 1978 affirmed Ivanov and Alexandrovs as the most physically fit, and they were approved as prime and backup, respectively. The Intercosmos mission flight crew consisted of an experienced Soviet cosmonaut as a flight commander, while the member state cosmonaut served as a flight engineer or a research cosmonaut whose role was to oversee their assigned experiments and equipment. Training was meticulous and intensive. The first phase included theoretical studies, flight practice in jet aircraft, weightlessness simulation, splashdown training, physical exercise, and retrieval training in difficult terrain. The second phase was more specific and concentrated on mastering the Soyuz spacecraft and the flight to the Salyut space station. Topic: <laughs> Experiments. In general, Intercosmos flights focused on five main areas of research, space physics, space meteorology, communications, space biology and medicine, and studies of the natural environment. Ivanov's mission was focused primarily on space physics, communications and environmental studies. In December 1978, SPEKTAR-15, a Bulgarian-made spectrometric system, was installed on the Salyut 6 training mock-up at Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. It was subsequently approved for space use. Elements of the SPEKTAR-15 were delivered to Salyut 6 on the 14th of March 1979 with the Progress 5 flight. These included the data storage block, the eyepiece, lens, and filters. Ivanov's experiments on the SPEKTAR-15 or other equipment previously installed in the station includes the following Equator – observations of atmospheric glow associated with ionospheric anomalies above the equator Polyuse – observation of polar aurorae Emissia – distribution of the intensity of the main spectral lines of the atmospheric glow spectrum Svetin – photometric observations Gamma Phon – various gamma-ray astronomy observations intended to improve gamma-ray telescope designs Aureol – observations of sunrise and sunset to determine basic parameters of the atmosphere Contrast – studies on changes in frequency response in the atmosphere caused by pollution near major industrial centers Atmosphera – study of optical characteristics of the atmosphere Illuminator – precise measurement of the changes in spectral characteristics of light coming through the station's windows Horizont – photographic observation of the solar meridian at sunrise and sunset Terminator – studies of the higher atmosphere Biosphera B – collecting data of use for studies in geology, geomorphology, agriculture and forestry, and pollution Balkan – Photography and spectrometry of various natural features on Bulgarian territory 
Operator – Evaluation of the mental productivity dynamic during adaptation to microgravity Dozer – Studying irradiation doses in various parts of the space station Opros – Continuation of psychological experiments from earlier missions designed to improve cosmonaut training systems Receptor – Studies on the functioning of human taste receptors in microgravity Pachivka, an experiment designed to improve the organization of rest in long-duration spaceflight Vreem, studies on the subjective perceptions of time among the crew Piran, five experiments designed to observe the influence of microgravity on materials production, these were to be carried out alongside cosmonauts Vladimir Lyakov and Valery Ryaman. SPEKTAR-15 was later used by Cuban cosmonaut Arnaldo Tamayo Mende. Topic. Flight Soyuz 33 was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome with Ivanov and Flight Commander Nikolai Rukavishnikov on 10 April 1979. The crew call sign was Saturn. The flight was scheduled to dock with Salyut 6 Soyuz 32 on 12 April Cosmonautics Day. However, upon approaching the Salyut, the final engine firing lasted only three seconds instead of six and the IGLA docking system switched off. The Soyuz main engine had malfunctioned and docking maneuvers were now impossible to implement. Salyut crew member Lyakov also observed a sideways jet toward the auxiliary engine during the failed main engine firing. The Soyuz 33 had limited life support resources and the crew had to return to Earth immediately. Flight Control ordered the Soyuz crew to shut down the main engine completely in order to preserve its fuel supply. There were two options, begin descent on a very soft trajectory, which would land the spacecraft several thousand kilometers from the planned landing point, or a steep descent that would have subjected the crew to very high G-strain. In both cases, the Soyuz would have relied on the auxiliary engine, which was confirmed to have been damaged as well. The crew initiated a steep descent and manually programmed the auxiliary engine to run for 187 seconds, slowing down the spacecraft enough to place it in a landing corridor. Rukavishnikov, who had excellent command and experience of the Soyuz flight systems, switched off all automatic landing programs. With the descent in progress, both Ivanov and Rukavishnikov felt that the damaged auxiliary engine had not provided enough impulse and decided to run it for an additional 25 seconds to further reduce the landing velocity. The Soyuz 33 landed surprisingly close to the initially scheduled landing point. Rukavishnikov and Ivanov's handling of the situation received praise. However, the crew had discarded the service module with the malfunctioning engine and the final component of the SPEKTAR-15, an optoelectronic block, prior to descent. This meant that the malfunction could not be examined, and a new Spectar optoelectronic block had to be produced for future missions. It was later successfully integrated with the rest of the equipment on Salyut 6 and the Bulgarian experiments were initiated in 1981 by Soviet cosmonauts. Despite the aborted mission, Bulgaria became the fourth intercosmos country after Czechoslovakia, Poland and East Germany, in that order and the sixth in the world to send a citizen in space. Ivanov's flight lasted one day, 23 hours and one minute, completing 31 orbits. Topic. Shipka program The Mir Space Station core module was launched in February 1986 and the SPEKTAR-256 system, a follow-up to the SPEKTAR-15, was to be fitted on the station. During an official visit to the Soviet Union in 1986, Bulgarian Defense Minister Dobry Durov arranged for a Bulgarian cosmonaut to be sent to the station with Soviet assistance. Additional talks with Glavkosmos were subsequently initiated by CLSR Director Prof. Boris Bonev, and an official agreement for a joint Soviet-Bulgarian mission was signed on of August 1986. 
Although similar in arrangement to the previous Intercosmos flight, this mission was a bilateral scientific agreement independent of the Intercosmos program. Bulgaria agreed to pay for the mission by designing and manufacturing the equipment for it, and then providing it to the Soviet Union. Candidate selection began in November 1986 and involved more than 300 Bulgarian Air Force pilots. The flight was scheduled for the summer of 1988, and applicants with command of Russian and computer skills were given preference to speed up the selection process. Ten were selected for the final round of medical examinations by Soviet physicians in Sofia. The final four were Krasimir Stoyanov, Nikolai Raykov, Alexander Alexandrov and his brother Playman. The first three were certified for the mission. Alexandrov and Stoyanov were selected to be the mission crew as prime and backup. The two were sent for flight training at the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center on 10 January 1987. Alexandrov was pictured in splashdown training with Vladimir Lyakov and Alexander Serebrov in November, but the crew was later announced to include Anatoly Solovyev and Viktor Savinik instead. Lyakov and Serebrov were assigned to the backup crew with Stoyanov. The flight and its scientific program were named Shipka, after Shipka Pass where a crucial battle between Ottoman troops and a Bulgarian-Russian force occurred during the Liberation War of Bulgaria in 1877. Topic: Experiments. The research schedule of the Shipka program encompassed five areas of study: space physics, Earth observation, space biology and medicine, materials science, and space equipment. Bulgarian factories produced nine devices, each in five specimens. Regen Astronomy Complex was a computerized system consisting of a CCD camera and a data processing unit. The camera matrix had several cooling regimes each suited for a different type of observations. The data processing unit was a computer for real-time image processing. Depending on the type of astrophysical observation, it could switch between different mathematical filters to yield the maximum amount of data possible from the observed objects or phenomena in deep space. Regen was seen as the first step in a 15-year program to design and build an integrated space station telescope for observations in the visible, ultraviolet and X-ray spectra. Parallax Zagorka, an image intensifier for near-Earth physics research. Designed to observe specific wavelengths 427.8 nanometers, dinitrogen, 557.7, 630 nanometers, its purpose was to help study the vertical distribution of atmospheric glow and the energy of charged particles. Parallax Zagorka was used in combination with the Regen Astronomy Complex. Terma was a high temporal and spatial resolution impulse photometer for observations of the rapidly changing optical signatures of polar aurorae, polar stratospheric clouds and lightning. Terma consisted of an optical receiver equipped with interference filters, a digital electronic unit and a control node. It was attached to a window and information received and processed by it was then transferred to the Zora computer at a rate of 20 kilobytes per second. When coupled with Zora, Terma was mostly used to collect data on turbulence and other processes in the higher atmosphere. In combination with Parallax Zagorka, it was used to study polar aurorae. SPEKTAR-256 built upon heritage from the SPEKTAR-15 used on the Salyut-6, Spectar-15M on the Salyut-7 and SMP-32 on the Meteor Priroda satellite, all designed and built under academician Demeter Meshev. It was a 256-channel system used to observe the reflectance of various natural and man-made objects on the Earth's surface. Like Terma, SPEKTAR-256 was attached to one of the windows of the station and consisted of an optoelectronic block and a data processing unit. Analog information was processed into 8-bit code and then transferred to a magnetic disk. Liulin was a dosimetry instrument used to monitor radiation flux and intensity in the 100 keV to 50 MeV range on the station. This was the first iteration of the Liulin type of dosimeters. 
Dozer B was a dosimetry set of passive detectors made of biomaterials. Used to monitor radiation on the station. Sun 3 was used to monitor circadian rhythms and sleep patterns in space conditions. It could record up to 12 hours of sleep pattern data on magnetic tape. Pleven 87 was an integrated set of medical instruments. Consisting of a microprocessor system, a stimulation unit and a control panel, Pleven 87 was used to perform 15 different studies on sensory and motor functions, attention dynamics during various physical or mental tasks, equanimity and operational reliability of cosmonauts. The set was entirely automated and provided visualization of all data. Zora was a mission computer used to both process data from other equipment and perform additional experiments on the basis of the results. It used a principal 16-bit system and a secondary 8-bit unit to interface with the other devices, a keyboard and a plasma display. All Bulgarian-made devices were installed on the Mir a week ahead of Aleksandrov's flight. The equipment functioned better than expected during testing. Alexandrov later stated that computerization of the experiments significantly increased efficiency as real-time results were generated and experiments could be performed repeatedly to verify the data. Overall, Alexandrov was to perform dozens of research activities related to the interstellar medium, the galactic center of the Milky Way and nearby galaxies, orientation using stars as a reference, synthesis of materials in microgravity, crystallization, muscular, vestibular and ocular functioning, among others. Alexandrov also continued work on experiments scheduled for Georgi Ivanov's flight such as KONTRAST2 and ILYUMINATOR2 and examined the properties of Bulgarian made space food. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Flight The original flight date was scheduled for 21 June 1988, but by April 1988, it was advanced to 7 June. This was caused by changes in the station's orbit by the engines of the Progress 36 resupply spacecraft. The earlier launch date would have also provided better lighting conditions for the Regen experiment, another factor in pulling back the launch date. The call sign of the crew was Rodnik. Flight control was provided by TSUP as well as a newly established situational center in Stara Zagora, Bulgaria. Unlike previous launches when the event was recorded and only broadcast if successful, Alexandrov's launch was broadcast live on Soviet television. Liftoff took place on 7 June in 1803 Moscow time on Soyuz Trademark 5, with Solovyev as flight commander, Savonik as flight engineer, and Alexandrov as research cosmonaut. At the time, the Mir was staffed by Musa Manarov and Vladimir Tatov, who had been there since 21 December 1987. In 18 hours 2 minutes and 22 seconds on 9 June, the Trademark 5 began approach maneuvers on its 33rd orbit. In 1940, the Trademark 5 had already established radio contact and TV transmissions, and was 400 meters from the Mir. Nine minutes later, live television broadcast of the approach was initiated. The Trademark 5 docked with the Mir in 1955 and began pressure equalization in 2012. All hatches were open in 2125 and the Soyuz crew transferred to the Mir in 2127. Alexandrov performed more than 56 experiments during his nine day stay on the station. During the Sun K experiment, he confirmed the normal flow of all three phases of non rapid eye movement sleep. Alexandrov also participated in a teleconference with state leader Toda Zhivkov, which was aired live on Bulgarian national television. On the morning of 17 June, Solovyev, Savonik, and Alexandrov began procedures to return to Earth with the Soyuz Trademark IV flight. It detached from the Mir in 1018 and initiated departure. Re entry engine firing occurred in 13 hours 22 minutes and 37 seconds, and the descent module entered the atmosphere in 1350. The spacecraft landed in 1413, some 205 km southeast of Topic: <laughs> Mission to 
Current status Following Alexandrov's flight, Bulgaria continued to design, produce and send equipment to the Mir space station. The Liulin class of instruments first developed for Alexandrov's flight are now used on the International Space Station and on the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter. The Bulgarian SVET plant growth system later installed on the Mir was used to grow wheat and vegetables in space for the first time. After the collapse of communism and the severe reduction of science funding, Bulgaria's cosmonaut program was largely shelved. Much of the infrastructure became defunct. In 2011, Georgi Ivanov urged the government to reboot the human spaceflight program. Krasimir Stoyanov has suggested that domestic plant growth and radiation monitoring equipment could allow a Bulgarian cosmonaut to join a human mission to Mars in the future, provided there is government support. Despite the current lack of a manned spaceflight program, a fully functional Soyuz TMA training analog is operational at the Aerospace Center and Planetarium of the Yuri Gagarin Educational Complex in Kamchia Nirvana. Topic Overview Topic See also Bulgaria thirteen hundred